This is Steve Downs, the voice of Master Chief, Sierra 117, and you're listening to Podcast Unlocked, the world's number one Xbox podcast. Now, finish this fight. Master Chief, out. What's happening, friends? Welcome to Podcast Unlocked, episode 466. It is October 20th, 2020. I'm Ryan McCaffrey, joined by Destin Legary. Bam! Hey, everybody. Love it. You're shot of a cannon. That's what. That's the Destin I love. <laughs> Brandon Tyrell. Good morning. Hello, hello. Oh, smooth and suave <laughs> today, my friend. Yes, mm-hmm. ready to record some audiobooks with that. He's got to balance the show out. <laughs> and a uh, special guest joining us, been wanting to get him on the show for a little while here, Cam Hawkins. Cam, a.k.a. the Cinephile Guy. Welcome, sir. Thanks for inviting me on. I'm a big fan of the podcast, and uh, this is a really great opportunity. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm more than happy. I, I, I first became aware of you on Spawn on Me. You were fantastic with the group, and... Uh, yeah, it's great to have you on, and and we'll just talk plenty of Xbox. I see you came dressed oh, yeah. for the part today, which I love. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was like, got an Xbox shirt, got to wear the Xbox, got to represent the brand, you know. Well, and yeah. before we went on the air, you were sort of straightening up a little bit. You you had a rock band guitar and a chair, which which just warmed yeah. my, my heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been playing rock band for recently. Uh, you know, I I didn't I couldn't get on the ship uh, when it came out because I was in college, and I you know how to save money and stuff like yeah. that. But uh, but I finally was just like, even though the instrument was way too expensive, I was just like, I need to get into Rock Band. Rock Band 2 is one of my favorite games of all time. So uh, very excited to uh, play more Rock Band now. Well, and it turns out that was an investment on your part because exactly. they're worth a fortune on eBay should you ever decide to part with it, which of course I don't recommend. Uh, and now, at least on the Xbox side, Rock Band 4 is going to be compatible, and all the gear, meaning with the with the Series X, which uh, all the DLC, all the all the instruments, Rock Band will live on for another generation. They're still supporting it with DLC. I love it so much. So, Cam, before we get going, uh, of course, we want to give the audience a chance to get to know you uh, and us too. Quite frankly, you know, we, we've traded a few emails, a couple of a couple of direct messages, but uh, it'll be be fun to to introduce you to everybody. So. You know, where can we find you online on, you know, YouTube or Twitch or Twitter, et cetera? What are you up to? And and sort of what's your your sort of personal Xbox story? Yeah, so um, I write over at DualShockers.com uh, where you can follow them on Twitter at DualShockers. And, uh, you know, my socials, uh, the Cinephile Guy on Twitter. Uh, and I stream on Twitch at Twitch.tv slash the Cinephile Guy. And when it comes to uh, my Xbox story... Uh, so for the most part, uh, you know, growing up, like, uh, it was, I was a big, I played on the Game Boy Color a lot. That was like, kind of like the, my first like real big system. Like I did dabble in other older systems like the NES, SNES, but like, I would say like the Game Boy was like the first like real system I invested my time into. And then like the PS2 came out and that's like one of my favorite systems, uh, ever. Um, but then like, I wasn't, I like everything that came out with the PS3 at launch was like, this doesn't seem what I want. And then like all my friends had Xbox 360 and like talked about like how great the multiplayer is there and all that stuff. So I was just like, all right, I'm going to, I'm going to switch over to Xbox 360 and uh, see, you know, and I played a little bit of Xbox, you know, I played Halo back on the Xbox, Halo 2 on the Xbox uh, through like friends and stuff like that. So I wasn't like completely new to the Xbox ecosystem. Yeah. But then, yeah, once I switched over to Xbox 360, I was just like, yeah, there's no going back for me. Like I love I love the achievements. I love, uh, I know that a lot of people are all about trophies, but man, I love the achievements. I love seeing my gamer score go up. Um, I love, I, I just love everything about the Xbox ecosystem. And, you know, I got an Xbox one day one just cause I was just dedicated to the brand. I knew that like, I knew that they messed up and they had to, you know, uh, backtrack and like, uh, to get to where they are now. But, uh, I just loved Xbox and I couldn't see myself leaving that ecosystem. So, uh, I'm super excited for uh, Series X and Series S, uh, and and uh, seeing what Xbox is doing now the past recent years. Like I've been uh, very happy uh, with the path that they're going, and it makes me very happy to be uh, an Xbox fan for sure. Which of the which of the of the games announced back at the July showcase are you most looking forward to on Xbox? Uh, I would probably say I probably say Fable. Just because Fable 2 is one, like, again, like, probably in my top 50 favorite games. Yes. I love Fable 2. 
Um, and I know, you know, I know that a lot of people were disappointed in Fable 3, but uh, I just, uh, you know, I just hope that Playground ends up nailing that game because I, I really want a good Fable game again. <laughs> it's been too long. We are all in the same boat. I think the, the entire Xbox community is collectively rooting for Playground to, to yeah. get that game right. It's, uh, yeah, right there with you. Thankfully, if it's if it's even close to Forza Horizon, I think we're all going to be pretty happy as far as the quality goes. Okay. Uh, before we get rolling, a quick programming note. My final preview of the Xbox Series X is now online on IGN.com or on YouTube.com slash IGN. So take a look at that. It's more of the all-encompassing. I was allowed to say anything I want. I can now talk about anything about this thing. Uh, it, they were There were a bunch of embargoes along the way where it was, okay, just talk about this, then talk about that. Now the gloves are off. Uh, so that preview covers all of that. Please take a, a read or a watch of it if you have not done so already. And obviously we're not done. Uh, the Series X and S are, gosh, less than a month away. So we'll be reviewing the consoles themselves, the launch lineup, et cetera. And that is actually where I want to start is with the launch lineup. It has been confirmed. The We've got a total of 30 games. Brandon Tyrell, I'm going to go to your way uh, because I'm already talking too much. <laughs> Go down the list, give us the list of games, and then let's let's talk about them after that. Okay, yeah. <clears throat> In alphabetical order, no less. Yes. Uh, starting at the top, we've got Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Right, new, uh, new third-party game from Ubisoft. We've got Borderlands 3 already out, Bright Memory 1.0, which is, uh, you might remember from the Xbox showcase in June, I want to say. That was the May um, one, yeah. The May one, yeah. It was that really sexy CG sort of looking, but it, it was all actually running in in, in uh, engine. Um, that, that really beautiful looking first person shooter game. So that's well, coming. No, that was Bright Memory Infinite. And right, this is right. Where this I, is the, yeah, I'm confused too. I had to look so this up. This is the base game that's, I believe, already released. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. yeah, on PC. So Infinite is the next gen upgrade, which I imagine there might be some sort of smart delivery component to that. I, I'm not entirely sure, but this is the base game for that. Bright Memory 1.0, that's coming as well. Keeping it rolling, we've got Cuisine Royale, which I've never heard of personally. Uh, Dead by Daylight, Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. We've got Dirt 5, Enlisted, Evergate, The Falconeer, Fortnite, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, obviously, Gears Tactics, Grounded, all Microsoft first-party exclusives, King Oddball, Man Eater, Manifold Garden, NBA 2K21, Observer System Redux, which is another sort of upgrade off that base game that came out last year or yeah. this year, uh, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, Planet Coaster, Tetris Effect Connected, The Tourist, War Thunder, Warhammer Chaos Bane Slayer Edition, Watch Dogs Legion, another Ubisoft open world game, WRC 9 FIA World Rally Championship, which is a mouthful, Yakuza Like a Dragon, and finally, yes, Your Grace. Um, some of those are smart deliveries. Some of them are Xbox Game Pass or smart delivery. Uh, they, are, as well. they are all optimized for mm -hmm. Series S and X, so they are all tuned up for the new console. Um, Cam, you're our guest. I want to go your way first. What is your reaction to this launch lineup? You know, you were a big 360 guy, Xbox One. This is a long list of games. How do you feel about it? Just like the general list, I think it's uh, I think it's solid. Uh, you know, I definitely am de definitely playing Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, I definitely I play Borderlands Three. I'm definitely gonna play more of that. I'm I'm interested in the Bright Memory game. Uh, I might uh, I might get into Devil May Cry Five. I actually played that through Game Pass uh, when it came on Game Pass last year. So maybe I'll wait until that hopefully comes to Game Pass with the Virgil DLC because uh, I, I did enjoy it, but I don't know if I would shell out forty more dollars. Uh, for that, um, you know, uh, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5. I've seen like Gears 5 looks insane on Xbox Series X uh, comparatively to uh, even the Xbox One X. So that's really cool. Um, I haven't played Ori and the Will of the Wisps yet. So that's one of the big 20, uh, 2020 titles that I just haven't gotten to yet. So that's cool. 
and I haven't played Tetris Effect, uh, and I, you know, and I was going to just eventually play it on PlayStation, but when this was announced, I was like, okay, well, now I'm going to play it on Xbox. Uh, mm-hmm. And then uh, uh, Yakuza Like a Dragon, I'm super excited for. I'm definitely going to play that. Uh, I'm getting that day one uh, as well. Um, so, like, you know, I think that there's, like, a good mixture of, like, of titles that, you know, maybe those that didn't have an Xbox, you know, that were on PlayStation and decided, oh, like, the Series X does look interesting enough where I want to, tr- you know, try uh, try that out and play Gears 5, Gears Tactics, Horizon 4. But then there's, like, there is some new stuff as well, like Assassin's Creed, um, you know, Bright Memory, um, Tetris Effect, first time on Xbox, like... Uh, and Yakuza Like a Dragon, which is is, is a pretty big like uh, exclusivity deal, even though it's only going to like March for uh, Xbox. Yeah. But I think that's you know still pretty big, like because all of Yakuza is released on PlayStation 4 first, and now it's and now the next you know this is supposed to be like the, a good jumping in point with a new protagonist and everything like that. But still, just like Xbox getting that next gen deal is uh, really surprising to me. So, Destin, how about you? What's uh, what's jumping out at you here? How are you feeling about this list? Generally speaking, like if just looking at the list, it's a killer lineup. It's a really, really good lineup. The problem is if you look at it in a bubble, it's a killer lineup. People just always stack it up against the competition, right? Really, the competition has two killer titles. Now, if Xbox could just have a thing, I feel like they'd be in a much better place. But I'm really excited just personally to play Assassin's Creed, Bright Memory Infinite, what else we got on here? Just looking down. Not the list. infinite. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> right. Bright memory. Sorry, no, you're right. You're right. Yeah, uh, Gears Five with 120 uh, hertz. No, no games punch. named Infinite are launching with this console. Yeah. There were that's <laughs> not happening. Yeah, and uh, this lineup's awesome. There's a lot of good stuff that you're going to be able to play in the launch window on your Xbox Series X or Xbox Series S, and and that's great. Brandon, where are you at with this? Um, <clears throat> I'll be honest. I'm a, I'm a little underwhelmed with the lineup. Um, obviously, I'm excited for Valhalla. Um, I will definitely play that. Uh, there, there are a number of games on here that I've already played and experienced. And so the question for me becomes, is it something that I want to spend time to check out how they look on new, better hardware? I don't know if that's going to be the case. I, I think you know anybody who's really, really passionate about video games as a hobby has a backlog of games that they could be playing. Um, so why I think it is a good lineup from the perspective of having a catalog that sort of touches all the different bases that you want. Um, personally, for me, there's not a whole lot on this list that I like will need to play day one. Um, I'm excited to give uh, Yakuza a try. I, I've never you know, jumped into that series before, and this, I believe, is an RPG, so that's kind of right up my alley. Um, but outside of, you know, Yakuza and Valhalla, there's a couple of smaller things I'll check out, but there's nothing that really screams to me as like, I must play this right now. Um, you know, having said that, it is a weird year. Uh, you know, we're moving further and further away from like hard edges on console generations. Things are bleeding together much more cohesively, starting even last generation with the Xbox One, uh, having the 360 sort of bleed into that and now moving forward as well. Cross-chain is, is a much bigger... Um, a much more common thing than it used to be. Um, and then obviously, you know, the pandemic, I'm sure plans would have been totally different without the pandemic, but, you know, taking all that into account right now, it's a fine list. I think it's a good list from a catalog perspective, but nothing really jumps out at me as like, this is, this is it, you know? I'm with you. Yeah. I'm with you on that. I'm, I know I hate to sound like a spoiled entitled gamer, but I'm disappointed by this too. I mean, it's 30 games, but you guys said it. It's there's there's nothing here that says I have to spend $500 to mm-hmm. play this on the new system. Now, that's I mean that both sort of well, by any definition, including literally because I went down this list. I believe if I've checked all these correctly, there's only one game on this list that is a Series X exclusive. And that's NBA 2K21. They're building a totally new next-gen version. So it's like you can buy that game on the Xbox One, but it is a different, a, a fundamentally different version of the game. Everything else here, Assassin's Creed, of course, Borderlands 3 is an old game, uh, all these, you know, Dead by Daylight, DMC5, 
Dirt 5, Yakuza, all of it, you can play on an Xbox One. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that it inherently makes makes it a bad game or a lesser game or a game that you, you shouldn't play. But there there is quite literally nothing here that you have to have a Series X to experience. And that's, you know, when you're you're talking to the early adopters, that's that's you know, that's the, the pre-orders sell out for the for us early adopters. That's you know, we all went through that first world anxiety of trying to get the Xbox Series X pre-order. And then you're like, okay, well, great. What what am I going to do on this thing? What's how am I going to show it off? It's like, well, there are going to be pretty games. Uh, Gears Five, as Cam touched on, Forza Horizon Four, which is a, a stunning game on the Xbox One. But again, these are all games that were developed for last gen. So yeah, I, I think the absence of Halo really hurts this lineup. Like it's it's not we I know we've been over that a million times already, but it's. It's clear that that was supposed to be the headliner, and yeah. you know, Destin, you mentioned uh, the competition, sort of com- comparing it that way. You know, they've got Spider-Man, which yes, is a cross-gen game, uh, as Halo would would have been and will be. But then they also have Demon Souls, which is a major first-party game, and that is a PS5 exclusive. So, you know, there are uh, a couple of things there where you're like, okay, well, I've I want to play that on PS5, but this list. Again, it's not to say that they're they're not great games because I mean we know we know Gears Five is a great game, we know Forza Horizon is a great game, we know Tetris Effect is a great game from when it was out on PS4. You don't have Destiny on here. I was gonna say that well, after it, Ryan was done talking. Is it is it a day one? Because th- I mean this is yeah. the copy yeah, it comes and paste. out November tenth. Yep. Well, this has been it, then Microsoft left it off the list because <laughs> this is straight from their email, copied and pasted into this document. It doesn't um, have enhancements yet. They delayed the enhancements to December That's probably so maybe why. That, maybe that's why yeah, they left it Because all, all yeah. everything on this list has been optimized it'll, it, for this. It'll run at 4K 30, and it'll take advantage of the faster hard drive, of course, but it won't yeah. have uh, 4K 60 or any of that other good yeah. stuff, like the FOV slider. Yeah, But I guess but, to speak to the point, does that, mm-hmm. I mean, would you buy a Series X to play Destiny, knowing that you play Destiny every day anyway? Out of curiosity. Um, I, I don't think it's about what I would do. Mm-hmm. I think it's about what a consumer has been playing on console on Xbox for a long time who sees that they're going to be able to take advantage of 4K60, that they're going to be able to take advantage of that lightning fast hard drive. Just popping a consumable in Destiny takes so long on current hard drives mm-hmm. that just upgrading to an Xbox One X is a huge improvement. Mm-hmm. This is just going to be like next level because these are... I believe these are Gen 4 M2 drives inside of the console, and it's just going to be like that compared to what you're currently using on uh, on the consoles now. Yeah, now, I, I should also, I guess, caveat this by saying, like, I'm spoiled because I'm coming from an Xbox One X to this. Mm-hmm. So a lot of these games I've already played in 4K and it, you know, in, in, in nicer, nicer visual options. A lot of people will be coming from the original Xbox One or even the Xbox One S, and that will be definitely a much more substantial because that's you're going from from yeah, 1080 to 4K at that point. That's a great point. I, mean, I think you know everybody in this room is sort of normalized when you think of Xbox and and what a game looks like on an Xbox. You're thinking of the One X, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But oh my God, I can't even imagine going from the original VCR Xbox One to an Xbox Series X. Like that has got to be night that. and day. Yeah, going that, from that, that thing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> That's Cam, my trophy, what, by the way. We'll get to that later, <laughs> Brandon. So Cam, what do you think? You mentioned a few that were highlights for you. What's I asked this of of the crew a week or two ago. What's the first game you want to fire up on the Series X? It'll be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Yeah, it'll be Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Uh, Assassin's Creed right is one you. of my Assassin's Creed is one of my favorite franchises. Um, I actually got to preview Assassin's Creed Valhalla uh, for for a you know a feature over at Dual Shockers, uh, which you can read right now on DualShockers.com. And uh, I really enjoyed uh, what I played out of it. And um, uh, cause I, cause it's being made by Ubisoft Montreal, which is the origins team. And like, you know, um, I feel like that there's some little diversity between, uh, people who 
prefer Origins over Odyssey and vice versa. Uh, I'm very much like I pref- I really really love Origins, um, but I didn't I wasn't a big fan of Odyssey personally. Um, so this definitely, from what I've played, seems more of a Origins experience. And even then, like I would say, even l- more to the traditional Assassin's Creed experience, um, while still being an RPG. So. Uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, to Assassin's Creed Valhalla for sure. But then, yeah, um, Yakuza's super great. And then um, Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. I'm a big Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, and that comes out like th- two or three days later. So um, that, But Assassin's Creed Valhalla is going to be my first game for sure. Real real question for you. The Halo news came out today. It's going to run it at 120 on uh, the Series X. Does that yes, do anything for, for you? That up. Uh, yeah, so like... Uh, so maybe it's just me. I don't know, but like I don't see very huge differences when it comes to frame rates. Uh, like 30 to 60 uh, over time, I've started to notice more of a significant difference because I've like I you know there's some games that run at 30 last gen, and then some that would run at 60. So I can kind of see a difference now. Uh, so 120, like I obviously know that the games are gonna like run better and it's gonna be a smoother experience. So that is exciting for sure. Um, and when I do play my games, I do. Uh, prioritize uh, prioritize frame rate over resolution unless it's a game that I think is like really really pretty and I want to see it in that in that experience. Um, so uh, you know I, I'm glad that it's a thing. I'm glad that it's happening. Uh, so yeah, yeah. I I'm glad you brought that up, Destin. Just as a quick aside, I I saw and I posted about this on Twitter this morning before we recorded and saw. I don't know why, like a bunch of fanboy replies and well, well, PC's already been like, <laughs> okay, that's all great, but. It is pretty cool to think that these the games in this Master Chief collection, when I first played them on an Xbox console compared to now on the Series X, they were in 30 they were at 30 frames per second. And now to be playing them at four times that frame rate <laughs> on the Series X is pretty cool. I mean, yes, they're old, but the fact that the they've been cared for and maintained and upgraded and they'll live on um, for another another Xbox generation. I just love to see that because they are great games and particularly, of course, the multiplayer stuff. You'll be able to just keep these Halo 2 multiplayer will live on, which yeah. which just makes me endlessly happy. I- yeah, it's... Oh, I was going to say, it's just great seeing so much support for the Master Chief Collection, even like now, like when it came out so many years ago and it's still getting support and uh, it's awesome to see. Yeah, to the hardcore Xbox fans out there, I, I encourage you to, you know, pop your disc in your old 360, just play it at 30 for a little bit and then come over and play at 120 on the Xbox Series X once you get it. And let me know if you can see the difference. I, I have a I have a strong feeling that from 30 to 120, you're going to be able to tell. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a really good sort of way to tr- sort of train yourself to be able to see the higher frame rate. If, if you've never really looked for that sort of thing before, Halo is just gonna be a great test bench for your eyeballs, so yeah. to speak. <laughs> yeah, and I don't. I don't know. If, I don't want to speak for him, but I don't. I don't know if Cam was necessarily saying that. I think because well, Cam was Cam, talking I, about the jump from thirty to sixty, right? Not from yeah, thirty I, to one twenty. That's like I'm so with you, fast. Cam, I'm yeah. I'm with you. You know, having having spent some time now with the Series X previewing some games, thirty to sixty I, is pretty clear to me. But I will say, like it's it seems like a bit of a diminishing return to my eyeball as far as yeah. what's obviously noticeable from 60 to 120 compared to 30 to 60 it's still buttery smooth obviously but and and i'm not saying i i don't want 120 frames but i think for me i think we might have touched on this last week so i apologize if i'm repeating myself but i think given what i've experienced so far on this thing with with 120 frames i think i would rather choose a bit more visual fidelity at 60 like 10 uh, 4k 60 rather than like 1440p 120. I, I think I, that's probably where I'm personally going to land with this the when, when the game there. gives me the I, choice. I'm really glad you brought this up. Cam, go ahead. But like uh, one of our listeners actually brought this up and I, I had some stuff I want to say about it. Cam, what were you going to say? Oh, yeah, I just said like I agree with you, Ryan. Like uh, 60 is perfectly fine. Unless it's, like, unless it's like a specific game where I feel like frame rate dessert. Like if I'm playing like Overwatch on my Xbox, then yeah, I'm going to want it in the, like the 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 12 of uh, the 120 if they ever end up bringing that support 
to uh, to the Xbox Series X, like the more multiplayer experiences, yeah, I'm going to want a higher frame rate because that's just naturally going to make you uh, more ahead of the game in that sense. Um, but like, yeah, for more single player experiences, I would prefer the 4K 60. Yeah, and to both your points, cinematic experiences are often better experience that even 30, you know, so you can experience them at 4k 60. So you have that, that higher FPS, but, uh, like films are shot in 24, right? Cause it gives them a unique feeling. Right. So to be able to play at 4k 30, and that's what one of the listeners said, he's like, I'd rather have 4k 30 over 4k 120, but I think it's game by game for a shooter. You probably want the fastest frame rate you possibly can Agreed. if you care about playing at a com- yeah yeah if you're playing at a competitive level level for a narrative experience like uh, one of the first games I can think of to do it uh, unfortunately it's about on, on the PlayStation Cyberpunk well I mean we're, we're yes. not getting a hundred you know I don't think we're getting to one twenty but <laughs> no Cyberpunk's a game that would be absolutely fine at sixty for example right you can play it at one twenty if you want but I don't know if that's the kind of experience where you would need 120 frames because yeah. it's it's like Grand Theft Auto. Grand Theft Auto is going to be fine at 30 or 60, right? Um, but it's all personal preference. This isn't something I can say, this is the definitive way to experience a game. It's it's your choice as a player. And that's, that's like one of the really cool things that the Xbox is doing, a- allowing you to sort of set your console at what you prefer and just play at that and adjust like in Dirt, the fact that you can have three different options about how you want to play that game is actually one of the positive aspects about dirt i think sure and, uh, there's yeah. there's just so much cool stuff i'm really excited about the series x and and you know the competition the playstation 5 and it's it's gonna change people's knowledge level and their options as players and it, that's so cool just across the board all right so before i move off of this topic uh, i want to go around the table again and you know, now that we have the launch lineup on paper, we obviously haven't played some of this stuff yet. Uh, but I want to see, I want to pull everybody, your all-time favorite Xbox console launch lineup. Uh, Cam, I know you said the 360 was the first one you dived into, but you did play some original Xbox back in the day. So you had just, just to give everybody a, a, a refresher, the original Xbox on day one, you had, of course, Halo Combat Evolved, uh, the one of the last killer apps we've ever had at a console. Actually, I guess they're Wii Sports, probably Halo, Wii Sports, and Zelda Breath of the Wild are the last three. But uh, you had Halo Combat Evolved, you had Project Gotham Racing 1, and you had Oddworld Munch's Odyssey. Those were probably the three biggest highlights of the original Xbox launch lineup. Then on the 360, on day one, you had Call of Duty 2, which was an exclusive because the PS3 wouldn't come out for another year. And that was right when Call of Duty started to really take off and become this global juggernaut. That was a that was a 360 exclusive. You also had Project Gotham Racing 3, which, of course, by that time, PGR was amazing. And so that was cool to have at launch. You had Condemned, which is one of my sort of cult classic favorites. Perfect Dark Zero and Cameo were the two big launch exclusives from Rare. And then on the Xbox One, you know, Cam touched on the the woes of the early days of the xbox one but it did have some interesting first party exclusives at launch no highlighted by forza motorsport 5 dead rising 3 and the flawed but beautiful but still kind of now cult classic rise son of rome so uh brandon i'll go your way first what what's your favorite i was hoping you weren't going to call on me (laughs) all right i'll go to destin first well, no, I, I, I can answer it quickly only because <laughs> the Xbox One is the first console generation I ever got day and date. So yeah. I don't actually have, you know, the background of saying I really enjoyed these launch lineup games. So I right. uh, I feel like I need to recuse myself. But by <laughs> default, I have to say Xbox One. Unfortunately. Yeah. All right. All right. Destin. 360. Next person. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> that's the only that's the right answer. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. It's. Obviously, your choice. Cam, what do you think from, uh, you know, again, from what you've experienced and what and what you remember about these games? Uh, I would have to go with the Xbox One as well, uh, surprisingly, just because I feel like out of those three games, I have played all three of those games, not because like I felt like obligated to, but because I actually wanted to and I enjoyed my time with all of them. Uh, Like, don't get me wrong, like Halo, come on, like, come on now. But like uh, the, you know, the other uh, 
PGR never really got into that uh, that series, and the same thing with Oddworld. So, uh, you know, um, it, it, the thing with me is that only certain racing games uh, really catch my attention. Um, they either have to be like super simu- like simulation type, or they have to be like ridiculous racers. Like uh, Split Second is like my favorite racing game. I love Split nice. Second. Um, and yeah, so with the 360, like yeah, like Perfect Dark Zero was all right. Um, uh, Condemned, I've heard of, and I heard like kind of like what you said. It's kind of like a cult classic type title. Uh, Call of Duty Two is is fine, you know. I I just feel like I you know I, I played Rise. I really liked Rise. It's uh you know I I honestly wish it got a, a second game. Uh, Dead Rising Three was really fun, and yeah, Forza Motorsport Five. Like I remember playing it for the first time. I was like, this feels great to like use in a controller. Like the the it, it I I love everything about uh, uh the three games that you know the, the launch lineup. Uh, was again just a really good variety, and I enjoyed all the games. So, Cam, I have to wholeheartedly agree with you on Rise. Rise is a diamond in the rough. It's just unfortunate yes. that that yeah. game never got like a second chance. Like, yeah, the game ended up getting monotonous and whatever by the end, but it was gorgeous. It did mm. a lot of cool stuff, and like, I just I wish there was a sequel. Yeah, well, I you're, agree. You're leaving out, Destin. The mm. the story was great in that yeah. game. With Marius, your 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 the hero, your yeah. player character, like this mm-hmm. that game had a fantastic story. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. that if Rome can have two seasons, Rise Son of Rome can have two seasons. <laughs> Come on. Also a great show, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic show. Yeah, it is a shame. Like that you guys are so right. That game felt like I think maybe one of the reasons it has become a cult classic is because everybody did see the how the greatness in it. Mm-hmm. And everybody acknowledges that, yes, the combat got repetitive. But if they could have done a sequel, if there would have been a sequel, they, it just seems like that game really could have found its its stride and, and become something super special. But yeah. rest in peace, Rise, Son of Rome. You were excellent. Uh, I would actually agree with Destin. For me, it's the 360. Uh, interestingly, we brought this up on Next Gen Console Watch last week, and the poll results, so we had a poll on the IGN.com homepage, the IGN audience at large disagrees with all of us. Uh, They overwhelmingly voted in favor of the original Xbox. Nostalgia play. Thank you, Halo 1. And and, and I I can't blame them. Yeah, it's... You know, the, uh, it's a killer app. Like, yeah. of all the cool games we just listed for PGR, 360 Halo, and Xbox yeah. One and Series X, there's only one killer app, and it was Halo Combat Evolved. Yeah. But, yeah, for me... P- PGR, call- though, Ryan, like, it was arcade and not simulation, so it had that going for it, too. <laughs> well, it was... Well, that was the cool thing about PGR, is it always kind of... It did a great job of walking that line between yeah. simulation and arcade. You know, it wasn't Burnout but it also wasn't Gran Turismo or Forza. You know, it was, uh, of course, Forza didn't exist yet, but. And, and I bought, I bet a lot of people got in on the OG Xbox around wave two of games. So then they just have this great library. Mm-hmm. The reason I picked 360 is actually because of the cadence after launch. Cause like we ended up getting Mass Effect. We had Dead Rising, which was really Dead cool Rising for two. its time. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know, all the other stuff on 360 that ended up, uh, coming out down the line. It just felt like I constantly had something to play. Gears came out on the 360. Oblivion, so, uh, Ghost Recon yeah. Advanced yep. Warfighter, Fight Night yeah. Round 3. Yeah, all uh, in that first Bioshock. year. All yeah. in that first year. <laughs> the yeah. first year of that console was insane. Yeah. 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 So I, I picked up a 360 for Dead Rising to touch on Destin, what Destin said. And it felt like after I bought that console, there wasn't a month that went by without a game that I had to play, you know? So yeah. that 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 launch window cadence was fantastic, but if we're strictly talking about games that came out right at the beginning, hmm. um, I think it was strong. I think the 360 was strong, probably as strong as the original Halo, or I'm sorry, the original Xbox. But that's again only because of Halo One, right? Like that was such a like a like a moment in in video games, when, you know landing on uh, the Halo for the first time and seeing that. But again, does one game a launch lineup make? I don't know. Right it did on. for Xbox. It did yeah, for the original so, Xbox. Right? And that's why we're still here talking about the fourth Xbox is because of Halo. So let's not kid ourselves. Uh, next this week, Phil Spencer, uh, in an interview with... 
Kotaku editor in chief Stephen Totillo giving an uh, his his first interview since the Bethesda acquisition, and yes, it did come up. Mm -hmm. uh, Stephen asking Phil, "Is it possible?" Now listen carefully to the wording here. Is it possible to recoup a seven and a half billion dollar investment if you don't sell Elder Scrolls Six on the PlayStation? Phil says yes, and he replied very quickly, Totillo notes. Yes, then he paused. I don't want to be flip about that. This deal was not done to take games away from another player base like that. Nowhere in the documentation that we put together was, how do we keep other players from playing these games? We want more people to be able to play games, not fewer people. Uh, when I think about where people are going to be playing and the number of devices that we had, and we have xCloud and PC and Game Pass and console base, I don't have to go ship those games on any other platform other than the platforms that we support in order to kind of make the deal work for us, whatever that means. And yes, he's saying whatever that means, not me. Uh, Cam, going your way first again here. Do you, can, do you, do you uh, take Phil at like a face value here? Do you want to decode what he's saying? What do you make of this? Uh, the way I read this, which is what I've been saying since the acquisition, is that... Yeah, Bethesda games aren't coming to PlayStation. Uh, I don't. You don't pay seven point five billion dollars to acquire eight studios to keep to put them on your right. Like you know, the console wars, in my opinion, are over. Like you know, Xbox is more than just a Xbox versus PlayStation mm -hmm. platform now. They are trying to do more than that. But they're they're still like in com competition with PlayStation. So don't get that like wrong. But you don't pay $7.5 billion, even if you're including the mer merchandise and you think about all, all the IP, like, for eight for those eight studios. Like, Sony acquired uh, Insomniac for $227 million. Yeah. Like, think about that. Like, and then you times that by eight, that's only $1.8 billion. So there's no way. There's no way that Bethesda games are coming to PlayStation. And, you know, you were tweeting, uh, you tweeted something out a few days ago about this, like... Um, you know, if if PlayStation would have acquired these studios, th this conversation wouldn't even be happening. Everyone would know that these are PlayStation exclusive titles. So why is it different with Xbox? Yes, like Cuphead went to Switch, but Cuphead is not owned. Like it was first party published by Microsoft. So that's irrelevant. Like Ori, they came to Switch. Sp uh, Phil Spencer said that that is because uh, basically Moon Studios asked nicely, like, hey, can, you, can we get these on Switch? <laughs> and then And then Phil Spencer was like, yeah. Like, you know, well, out of respect of your request. So, like, you know, like, I don't know why people think that just because Xbox acquired these studio, the, like, these big IPs, that they're going to go multi-platform. Like, Microsoft is a trillion-dollar company. $7.5 billion is nothing to them. Yeah, I, 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 just, think, I think the reason people are expecting that out of Microsoft is because there is precedent set when Microsoft purchased Mojang with Minecraft, right? They bought Minecraft. Granted, it was already out on PlayStation, I believe. That was oh, a long yeah. time ago. Yeah, it, was already out on, already, yeah. it was already out on PlayStation, but they still supported it. And, and you know, uh, they didn't pull it from the platform or restrict it from other people. So it sort of speaks to Microsoft's philosophy of like not restricting it from other platforms, even if those platforms are competitors. Having said that, I think Cam's 100% right. Like Microsoft is no longer a single platform entity, right? Like the console wars as we know them, as stupid as that term is, is effectively over. Microsoft now is a first party manufacturer and developer of a console and PC and wireless ecosystem. And they don't need to support PlayStation in order to um, allow people who don't own an Xbox to play those games. So basically, rather than saying like, okay, we're going to make money by selling to PlayStation users, they're saying, hey, we have a ton of different ways if you don't want to buy an Xbox. So you can play them if you want, but the onus is now on you to join our ecosystem however you like. Destin, are you are you with the other guys? The internet better get ready because Bethesda's Xbox exclusive. Come on over, baby. The water's just fine. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been, you been cooking that Good line Lord. up? I just thought oh. of it. <laughs> uh, I feel like you're I, workshopping I, a catchphrase every I, week. I do want to. I do want to talk about the Mo, the the Mojang Mojang, however you want to yeah. pronounce the thing. Is that like I feel like with that Minecraft is is like a platform in of itself, kind of mm. like for, how Fortnite is now. That I think that that is a special case. 
you know, where that's that's a different situation. But like literally anything else that they own, like I wouldn't expect, you know, anything to come to PlayStation specifically. Switch, I think that there's a different conversation there just because of their relationship with Nintendo and like, you know, like Cuphead still has DLC coming out. I'm sure that's going to make its way to Switch. Like, if there ends up being another Ori game, that'll probably come to Switch. Like, but when it comes to PlayStation specifically, I wouldn't, I wouldn't count on it. Specifically with Bethesda as well. Yeah, and I, I, I think when this, I mean, when all this news first broke, I was really hesitant to say that like Bethesda single player games are going to be, uh, I guess, what do you even call it now? First party exclusive yeah. um, for Microsoft. <clears throat> But well, you can't say console exclusive anymore because that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> um, I was really hesitant to like check that box, but the more I think about it, the more I think that you know you don't need to. Uh, the potential of like millions of units you're going to lose by not selling on the PS5, um, I think, sort of balances out well with the fact that uh, there are now more ways to play Microsoft-owned and exclusive games than ever before. And touching back on the conversation we had last week, if this xCloud bootstrap web browser based app ever comes into its own and you're able to access xCloud from platforms that you wouldn't, that don't specifically allow it and, and sort of iOS. facilitate it. Yeah, iOS, PlayStation, you know, things like that. Um, then it's sort of a moot point, right? Like you could play an Xbox game anywhere. So I, maybe the conversation isn't like Microsoft won't allow PlayStation users to play games, but the conversation is now you don't necessarily need any piece of hardware to play a Microsoft game. Like that, the, yeah. just the whole conversation shifts at that point. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I don't think we were all wrong or or misguided to have the conversation when the when the Bethesda purchase first happened about what is Microsoft going to do? Whereas, as Cam was bringing up uh, the point about if when it if it, if the tables were turned and it was Sony, there'd be no question. Mm -hmm. be, because uh, because of uh, so continuing to support Minecraft on PlayStation and also but Psychonauts 2, which still isn't out, is coming to PlayStation 4. That is still going to be uh, re released as originally planned on PS4, unless they change the plan between now and then. But as we currently know, it's still PS4. And also these two uh, timed exclusivity deals that Bethesda had made with t uh, Ghostwire Tokyo and Deathloop. Mm -hmm. Those are still happening. And Obsidian so, with the Outer Worlds, right? Yeah, that's enough. Thank you. That's <laughs> another really good one. Uh, and they ended up bringing it to Game Pass. And, and that was part of our conversation, too. It's like, OK, well, you know, Microsoft's probably going to do what makes them the most money. And maybe it's. Put put it out on play. Put Elder Scrolls Six out on PlayStation, but have it on Game Pass on Xbox is the mm -hmm. incentive. But but yeah, the more the more we think about it, I, I'm totally with Cam as well, and and the rest of you guys. Uh, I mean, just look at what read between. You don't even have to really read that far between the lines of what Phil is saying here. He says, uh, "The number of devices that we had, we have X Cloud and PC and Game Pass and console." So he's basically saying, I'm not taking this game away from people. Yeah. There's still plenty of places that you can play Elder Scrolls 6. It just PlayStation won't be one of them, but you'll have plenty of other choices. Plus the seven and a half billion dollar thing that Cam brought up. So, yeah, uh, my take here is not only in agreeing with all of you guys, but uh, I just think he he doesn't want to outright say it yet. And it's because I think he wants, he doesn't want that to be a distracting headline or a thing that then becomes like, you know, he's got PlayStation people mad at him, even though, of course, I mean, he bought him, he can do whatever he wants. But I think he doesn't want this to be a story distracting from the Series X launch. I think okay. after, after the Series X launch, whether it's end of this year, early next year, whatever it is, we'll get a more definitive statement of this is never coming to PlayStation. Starfield, for example. Exactly. That'll be the one that gets addressed first. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's good times. <laughs> All right, let's keep going. We've got plenty more to talk about, but I guess we've still got, uh, I guess, what, 25 minutes or so left in this episode. Speaking of Game Pass, touched on that, we've got some 
really interesting stuff that's on the way. I don't know if you guys caught this tweet by the Xbox team on social media. <laughs> Rainbow Six Siege. It now it hasn't been named, but Xbox Game Pass Twitter account posted a wordless image of <laughs> it was a siege. It was an attack on a castle, a siege, if you will, with six rainbows in the sky and nothing else. So <laughs> reading between the lines again, Rainbow Six Siege appears to be heading to uh, the Xbox Game Pass service. Destin, that's a big deal. Yeah, it is. And honestly, it makes sense. The The base game is, you know, you get your base operators or whatever. And then most of the most of the things after that, you just pay for the season passes or you pay for the specific operators within that that season pass. And, and that's where they make their money. So this is great. More Rainbow Six Siege players on console. Let's go. Cam, have you spent any time with this game yet over the years? But I've seen plenty of people play it, and I think that it's uh, like those people that are like great at Rainbow Six Siege. I'm I'm just like y'all are on a whole nother level. There's just like so much to the to that game, and uh, so much uh, you know management and what you're doing uh, when you're when you're playing those matches. That like man, I it's super impressive, and I'm like I'm really glad that this uh, you know because the game kind of had a falling out of sorts in, uh, in the beginning but then it like got back on its feet and now it's like one of the biggest uh esports out there and it's uh it's really cool like i know that those that love siege are like super passionate about it uh, more than like most esports communities that i've seen yeah i do the on the six series for ign and um it's really fun like i got really into it when we started that series <laughs> and uh, i was getting okay at it but man when you start learning how to like use your corners and what walls to take out and how to use a mirror properly and just what to counter with. And that game is, that's a great game. It's just a really, really good game. It's a chess yeah. match, that game. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I did the original review for IGN, mm -hmm. which I believe, if my memory is correct, was December of 2015. I think that game's five years old now. Wow. And yeah, to Cam's point, it's come such a long way since then that uh, it's it, we, it actually necessitated, we did a re-review of it. Tom Marks did a re-review of it last, I think 2019, sometime last year. And yeah, it is, it, you know, they've added so much to it and, and tweaked so much of it, but the core of it is so good that now, and there's a, there's a next gen version coming, which existing players will get upgraded to for free. So that's a game that wouldn't surprise me if they're going to do 120 frames a second and, uh, 4K, because uh, that's a competitive shooter. So that'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. But you know, it's only going to add more, an even bigger player base to this already monster hit of a game. So you know, Xbox and PC are are going to have the probably probably the largest player bases for this. I mean, I know I don't want to discount. I mean, PlayStation 4 is a hugely successful console. I guess. I won't. I guess I won't frame it competitively. I'll say there will be plenty of players, no matter what mm -hmm. platform you're playing on. So you'll you'll always be able to be able to get a good game for years to come on this. But yeah, that's. I mean, that's the, that's a big get for Game Pass. I mean, that's a triple A. That's an A list video game right there. Uh, and then I don't know if I'm the only one here that's a, a fan of the classic Lucas Arts adventures, but three of Tim Schafer's. 1990s uh, point and classic adventures are all now coming to Game Pass on Xbox and PC, of course. But they had come out. Sony helped bankroll them, and they they were actually PlayStation console exclusive when they first came out. They've been kind of out for a while, but now they are coming to Xbox and Game Pass. So it's Grim Fandango Remastered, which is regarded as one of the best games of all time. Day of the Tentacle Remastered, which is a very funny game. And then my favorite Tim Schafer game, uh, with respect to Grim Fandango, but Full Throttle. Uh, so there's Full Throttle Remastered, which is just has this hilarious dark humor to it. Uh, and all three are coming on October 29th. Now, if you guys have played these, I'm curious to hear your thoughts. And if you haven't, if you're going to give them a try 
on Game Pass. Cam? Yeah, so I've never played any of these games. I know of all of them, just haven't played any of them. Uh, I, Double Fine is just one studio that I, uh, like, I, all their games that I've seen, I'm like, these look super fun, and I want to play them. Like, I still really want to play Brutal Legend, which just recently got added to uh, Game Pass as well. And, um, but I just haven't yet, And uh, but I definitely plan on it. Like, Psychonauts as well. Like, I have Psychonauts, like, backwards compatible on my Xbox, and I'm looking forward to Psychonauts too. So I definitely, like playing on eventually going through all these games and uh, and looking into to double fine yeah you need it sounds like you just need to do like a a, a, a weekend binge a double fine weekend binge and yeah. get caught up <laughs> yeah normally when i like uh there's like a series or like a number of games that from like a same studio that i want to play through i try and just like stream all of them just because it nice. gives me more reliability to get through them uh, so, because, you know, the, the backlog is just endless and it's like, oh, I kind of want to play this game now. It's like, oh, nope, you got to finish this game first. So, that's, Destin? that's how uh... <laughs> not, your, not your bag, adventure games? It's okay. You're allowed to. I get why you love them, <laughs> but I, I don't, I'm not actively planning out my calendar yeah. to play Day of the Tentacle. <laughs> hey, I hear you. I mean, not a, that's a, not every genre is for everyone, right? Like Miranda, yeah. who's, who uh, was tied up with some other stuff today. She loves Dota. You will never mm-hmm. catch me playing one of those games. It's just yeah. not my thing. <laughs> so it's, I totally get it. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Next. Ah, here's an interesting story. Microsoft's new, quote unquote, again, this was their terms, not ours, quadruple A studio, The Initiative, who we did not end up hearing from at the July Xbox showcase, has added more Sony first party employees, former employees, obviously, to its ranks. Two ex-Naughty Dog folks, uh, Lee Davis, formerly Naughty Dog's head of Melee animation, has been appointed as the initiative's lead gameplay animator. And Lauren Garcia, who was previously Naughty Dog's character shading technical director, is now the senior shading technologies director at the initiative. So uh, they have they've been hiring from around that very deep pool of talent in Santa Monica, Brandon Tyrell. Yeah, Naughty Dog, Sony Santa Monica. First of all, how big is a game's budget that you have a lead melee animator? Like that seems so specific. <laughs> I mean, it you know, the proof is in the pudding, I suppose. Like mm-hmm. the there's a lot that goes into that, and I appreciate that. That's just crazy to me. Um yeah, I you know, the there's a lot of excitement around the initiative. They're a big studio, they're still building out their team. I'm sure they are spending quite a bit of money to recruit top talent. And Santa Monica has a lot of talent uh, to go around. So good news all around for the initiative. Uh, I will still continue to say that we're going to see whatever the initiative is working on every single event. I will probably (laughs) be wrong for the next two years, but I'm going to do it anyway. And uh, I'm just like every time you hear about the studio, it's it's more good news. And uh, I'm just waiting to see what they've been working on. Yeah, I mean, they're, one of their leads, Drew Murray, was the lead designer on Sunset Overdrive at Insomniac, mm-hmm. one of, you know, which is probably still my favorite first-party Xbox One game. Actually, that's a good one. Cam, we were talking, you know, you're, you're, you're professing your love for Rise. What's, what's your favorite Xbox One exclusive so far this generation? Now that it's yeah, no, now, over? now I'm thinking about it. Uh, I would probably say... I'd probably say Quantum Break. Nice. Mm. I think I think I yeah. would. Um, I feel like that game didn't get enough love, and I feel like the amount of love, I'm not, I like I I would say that I enjoyed Control more than I loved Quantum Break, but I think that like the amount of like hype that Control has gotten over the past year is like Quantum Break should have gotten some of that love as well. But at yeah. that point, you know, Xbox was still kind of getting back on its feet, so not a whole lot of people played it. Um, so but yeah, Quantum Break it was really cool. Uh. I, I just appreciated that they tried something different. Um, uh, something Overdrive, I've tried to get into like a few times, and just something about, su- surprisingly enough, su- something about the like movement in that game just really throws me off, and I don't know what it is. Um, so, but yeah, I love Rise um, as well. Uh, yeah, so I'd probably, but I'd probably have to say Quantum Break. Strong, I, call, I like that. Doesn't get a lot of I love, like that. So. Yeah, Sunset Overdrive, it's interesting that you specifically mentioned movement because it is a game, like, 
again, is for me saying it's my favorite Xbox One exclusive. It there is a major curve, like a learning curve on that, on the the movement controls in that game. But there is a time, at least at least was for me, and and some people I've talked to where it does just click, mm-hmm. and then you're just all over the city. You're doing everything you want. But I totally respect and understand where where you've kind of tried it a couple times and just not not had it click with you. I want to go um, back one more time and, and give it give it a, another fair shake because I really want to love that game. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, I hear you. Now, uh, actually, Cam, I want to go back to you for sure. another quick thing. We have we have debated over a number of episodes over the oh, last. God. <laughs> number of months in fact going back to i remember having these arguments in the studio back in the in the before times back when we could all be together in the mm-hmm. same room uh we are torn on this show i think it was like even a 50 50 i know brandon tyrell does not he thinks slash does not want the initiatives game to be perfect dark a bit of that um how do you feel? Do you because that, that's the you know the rumor is is it perfect dark? Do you want to see the initiative with all this talent it's amassing? Do you want to see them do something completely new, or would you like to see a collection of talent like that give a a, a God of War like attempt at a reboot of Perfect Dark? Where, how do you feel about it? Well, I've, uh, first off, because that's something I was going to bring up in general. I think uh, yeah, if it is Perfect Dark. I don't. I don't want it to be perfect dark. Though. Thank you. Thank and the you. Reason, and the reason why a I don't want a reason. Be, yeah, the reason why I don't want to is just because it's been so long. And like, if they, the, the way I would see how they would probably attempt it would be something similar to like. It, I feel like it would be like how they how Crystal Dynamics did the Tomb Raider trilogy. That's kind of like how I think that it would be executed. Um, and I love Tomb Raider, like Tomb Raider uh, 2013. Yeah, that's I love that game. Um, uh, unpopular opinion, I like that one much more than Rise, but I think Rise is still great. Um, and uh, I think that if it was a perfect, dark, I I just want them to do something new because I I know that like you know people are just like oh like Methes- uh, or Microsoft is just like buying talent and like they're not like making original games or anything like that and i was like well the initiative is a brand new studio let's give them something brand new to do like something that we have no expectations on like we don't know what it's coming like and and granted we don't know for certain that it's perfect dark at this point but i would like something new personally i don't actually remember where the oh i'm sorry i didn't know you were oh sorry sorry sorry. I i was just gonna say i love uh like i would love a perfect dark reboot in some instance but i don't want it to be the initiative that works on it I totally agree. Like, I think I think you're 100 percent right. Where if the initiative tackles Perfect Dark, it's going to be in the same vein as uh, Crystal Dynamics Tomb Raider, Santa Monica's new take on God of War. You know, like a more realistic sort of approach to a classic. One, I don't think Perfect Dark is the right vehicle for that. You know, I mean, it's a game about rescuing aliens and being a super spy with all kinds of cool gadgets and stuff. I don't know that you that that's the right vehicle for that amount of production value, if that makes sense. Um, and I also, I don't even at this point remember, where did the Perfect Dark rumors start? Does anyone remember? <laughs> or is it just something we've all like collectively, oh yeah. I yeah. think No, I, I think, think there were, was like, even a recent, years. somebody like Venture Beat or somebody had said that they, like publicly said that they heard that that's what it was, but it, nobody's been able to verify it yet. So, so like my, my uncle who works at Nintendo <laughs> knows a guy. Yeah, well, knows. you know, we'll see. Yeah. There was also something uh, leading up to the last event where they showed, with the event they showed off Fable, mm-hmm. there there was uh, like inactive handles for both Fable and Perfect Dark. That's right. right. So that, that's why people thought that Perfect Dark was going to be announced and it was going to be through the initiative because that's really the only studio that right now that we could see would actually be working on that. Tackling uh, it, yeah. so. Hmm. Well, you guys, what? I mean, you make a, you make good points. I think I don't disagree with you, even though I do want to see it. Uh, I mean, I would be happy with something new, but I would also be I would be super excited about Perfect Dark because uh, I'm a big stealth fan. And I think I mean, granted, they might do it in a way that's not at all what I see in my head. But I think a Metal Gear Splinter style, Splinter Cell style third person action adventure narrative driven narrative heavy stealth game 
that's a bit more serious in tone, yeah, I think could be phenomenal, phenomenal with that level of talent and with that IP, with the, with Joanna Dark and the Perfect Dark IP. So what? we'll see. Can I chime in for just a please? Sec? Yes. No way in hell. No way in hell. It's too or uh, Perfect Dark. It's just not. They're developing something new, and I've been reading about the staff and and who's here. We got Daryl G. He's worked on Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, COD, Destiny 2. We got Dan Newberger. He's worked on Tomb Raider. We got Drew Murray. He worked on Ratchet, Resistance, Sunset Overdrive. We got uh, Rob. He worked on the Uncharted games. We got Ben. He worked on God of War 1 to 3 and Titanfall. Tom, he worked on GTA 5 and Red Dead 1 and 2. Chris worked on Metal Gear Solid 5. Christian worked on GTA and Manhunt. They have a killer lineup of talent and like people do not realize this is like unprecedented whatever they're developing like i'm i i'm either <laughs> gonna be super excited or it's gonna be a shocking disappointment like if this killer team well if this killer team comes together and they don't create something phenomenal i will be absolutely shocked like like they're just they're they've made so many great things in their well, careers but you're well, implying I, now that perfect dark couldn't or wouldn't be something awesome they're not making perfect dark i they're totally making agree. something <laughs> i don't yeah. it can't please be. Some like, even I even you that. said more of a realistic approach and as destin mm -hmm. was rattling off that impressive list of games that the, that talent has worked on there's a lot of third person cinematic action experience on that team. Yeah. Guess guess what Microsoft's portfolio has been missing this entire generation that they've exactly been getting crushed by by Sony exclusives. And even you said if they take it a more realistic approach to Perfect Dark, that is a family friendly genre, right? I mean, that game stars a literal alien that you rescue from prison with a gun that can shoot through walls. Like I don't see them <laughs> giving that sort of that that realistic approach to a, a um, an IP like that. I just don't see it happening. I think Destin's 100% right. They're making something new, uh, and I'm excited to see what it is. But it is in Perfect Dark. This and I, clip, I'm stoked. This clip is either you guys are either gonna post this as like a victory lap when <laughs> when the project gets announced, or the everyone in the audience is gonna tweet this clip at you to throw it in your face. Yeah, yeah. repeatedly. If it like is in 2022, it is perfect dark. In 2022, <laughs> when they dark. announced Perfect Dark, smash cut to Destin and I strung <laughs> up in the town square as people throw vegetables at us. If it is yeah. perfect dark, it's gonna be off. The chain, insanely good, like really, <laughs> I like. It's gonna be the best perfect dark I've ever seen in my life. There's been like two of them. Yeah, there's I, yeah, there's no way yeah. it's perfect dark. I don't him. want it to be perfect dark, but my like just my gut, like something in my gut tells me it's gonna be perfect dark, even though logically it doesn't make sense to me. But if it is perfect dark, or if someone does end up doing a reboot for perfect dark over at Microsoft's, like one of Xbox's studios. I just want it to be like fresh. Like the two games before, they don't matter. This is a re like this is a complete yeah. reboot. Yeah. Like, you know, because I think that that would be a mistake. If yeah, I don't don't. think we have to worry about that. I think <laughs> okay. uh, I don't think there'd be any continuity <laughs> yeah. concerns yeah. about about a new to, perfect dark. To yeah. Cam's point, to your point, Ryan, it's not like there's five people over there. This is a huge studio that could be doing more than one thing. I don't That's think true. so. I don't think so. I mean, they probably have right an R and D yeah. team, but they're still. Yeah. I mean, God, the office isn't even filled out yet, and I, I get that, like, it's not going to be filled out because of the pandemic. They're still building a team, though, to make a game. I don't, I don't see how they're building multiple teams to make multiple games. Outside of, you know, most big studios have that team that just like sort of prototypes things. Um, so I, I, I really don't think they're making two games over there. I think all like it is a focused laser on whatever this new thing is going to be. Because Microsoft built them to get a big, impressive game on the market, and they need that yeah, big, a, impressive game out. A system-selling, like, yeah. top-flight Halo caliber kind of game. All right, we're running out of time. I want to get to the loot box here. Rudy from Spain sending in a Yappa video comment. Let's hear from Rudy. Hey, Unlock Crew. This is Rudy. Greetings from Spain. With the push of Game Pass, do you anticipate the popularity of more social features like the daily, weekly, and monthly quests that are available in the Game Pass Ultimate app? These are small objectives like complete 10 battles in Final Fantasy VII. Currently, I can't access them because I only have Game Pass for PC and they're gated behind Game Pass Ultimate, 
but I think it'd be really cool to unlock achievements or exclusive avatars or something like that. It definitely encourages the exploration of the Game Pass catalog, and I think it help, helps build more community for players like myself who aren't that into online multiplayer. Cheers. Thank you very much, Rudy. That was uh, excellent. Yeah, I've uh, it's it's cool seeing those those sort of challenge achievement things pop up on Game Pass games. Cam, I'll go your way first. What uh, do you like these? Do you do you want to see more of this stuff from Xbox? I definitely want to see more impl uh, implementation with this. Like, uh, so one of the things that I actually really like that PlayStation does compared to Xbox are the themes. I really like the themes, and I know that you can technically put whatever you want on the background of like your Xbox One uh, X or Series X, you know, moving forward. Um, but I don't know. I always thought the themes were really cool and how they were like designed into the actual. Uh, you know, apps when you're on the dashboard and things like that and how they would be different depending on what the theme was. And like back on the 360 where there were uh, avatar items tied to achievements. Like I remember like getting yes. the no like the gnome in Left 4 Dead 2 and like the med pack in Left 4 Dead 2. Um, and I really wish uh, that they could implement uh, that more, uh, whether it be with Game Pass or with achievements again, uh, where you can get... Because I, like, I remember I set up my avatar when... Uh, you know, when the Xbox One first launched and I didn't touch it since, but I always really liked the avatars and I want, I would love more, re like more reasons to like mess with my avatar more and customize them and things like that. So I, I, um, I hope that they do it and I think they, like they will do something in like more. I don't know specifically what I'm saying, but I would like, that's what I would like to see from Microsoft. Love it. All right. We're running out of time. Let's get to trivia here. Carlos Para, his gamer tag is Old Man Noob76. That is a phenomenal gamer tag. <laughs> Asks the following: In November of 1999, the Sega Dreamcast launched in America, and they had a partnership with Microsoft, who of course had not yet produced the Xbox, to provide an optimized Windows operating system for the Dreamcast. What version of Windows did the Dreamcast use? Was it Windows Millennium Edition? Windows CE, Windows DX, or Windows 98? I'm going to go Destin's way on this first. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I was so I confident going into this. I was so confident going into this, and then I, you read the question out loud, and I'm like, oh, no, now I'm doubting myself. <laughs> this I actually Ooh, remembered, I'll... but I, I, I'll be curious. There, to, just as a, It's not even a clue. There was a... A little on the front of the Dreamcast, there is a there's a little stamp thing that says "powered by," and it's a Windows whatever here. So, yeah, it was, I do remember this. Uh, so, Destin, what do you think? You want to take a shot? I'll say A. Millennium. Okay, Windows Millennium Edition. De uh, Brandon, I'll go your way. I feel like it might have been a clue <clears throat> because if you put it on the front of the box, it's got to have brand recognition. Otherwise, why would you put it on the front of the box? If that's the case, I'm going to go, God, dude, I don't know. I'm just trying to spin straw into gold right now. I'm going to go B. Okay, Windows oh, C. Man. That, that's good. Um, it's right, one of Cam, them, I bet. Cam, any, any thoughts on this? I know you were a younger gamer at this point, but maybe yeah. you saw a Dreamcast, friend had one, something at some point. Any thoughts yeah. here? Uh, yeah, I played. I played a decent amount of Dreamcast when I was younger. I mm. I don't know anything about this though. Uh, based off of one connection that I see between the questions and the answers, I'm gonna go uh, C. Windows DX. Okay. Well, no one way of you it was 98. It's too one heavy. of you. Did, no, one of you did get it right, yeah. uh, and it's Brandon Tyrell with Windows oh, yeah. E. I knew it was M E or C. Luck continues to rain to upon me. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I saw I saw DX, so I'm like, oh, Dreamcast X. Yeah, you know, so. but they so, can't market it on the front of the box, right? Because yeah, it's proprietary. I, so I remember the CE, like I remember that edition of Windows. Dang it! And ME just feels like a little bit of a red herring because of millennial. M ME was trash. ME was, was it trash. okay? Yeah, Windows yeah. So ME was bad. Yeah, CE and then wasn't I, great either. It was for me. Was it was between code. B and D. Like I'm like, all right, 90s, yeah. 98. Everybody so knows it. When Windows CE was used on like the old old school little like kind of the Palm light. Pilot type things, yeah. the PDAs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and they used a version of that. So it's this pared down version of Windows. 
So Brandon Tyrell, excellent job. You have extended your lead, by Moving the way, my further friend. Further ahead, based much off to, luck much of to the to and chagrin. Uh, yeah, you're up a couple Want points now. So, what do you got? You have two there, trophies, Dustin. I've got one. <laughs> If you have a loot box question, send it in via Correct. email, unlocked at IGN.com. <laughs> Include the question for multiple, multiple choice answers and note the correct one in your email. And then for the loot box, which, uh, which was awesome this week from Rudy in Spain, would love to hear from you. Just go to this episode's article page on IGN. So just type in on Google, IGN unlocked 466. You'll find this the page for this episode. And right at the bottom, just above the comments, leave a Yappa video comment. You don't need to make a Yappa account. You can log in with uh, Discuss. You can log in with Facebook, Google, or LinkedIn, I believe as well. So plenty of ways you can log in and leave a video comment as Rudy from Spain did. And with that, uh, we are done. It is time, yeah, it is time to, actually, yeah, we are at the end. So I wanna go Cam's way first. Cam, uh, it's been awesome having you. You definitely need to come back again. This is great. Where can we find you? Everybody, now that everybody loves you, after it's been seventy minutes, you've won everyone over. Uh, where are we? Where are you on Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, etc.? So I again, I write for DualShockers.com. Uh, you can check out all my writing there, and you can follow DualShockers at DualShockers. You can follow me on Twitter at the Cinephile Guy, and I stream on Twitch at twitchtv guy. Love it, Destin. Twitch.tv slash Destin tonight, 8 p.m. Pacific, and on Thursdays, and of course, IGN.com, baby. Did you get, wait, wasn't it the <laughs> Destin channel? Did you get yeah. to slash Destin now? Yeah, I got Twitch.tv slash Destin and uh, nice. YouTube.com slash the Destin channel still because YouTube, if somebody from YouTube watches, help me get this sorted out. <laughs> Someone probably does. You might hear from yeah. somebody real soon here. Call me. We, we know they have your Gmail address because they're yeah. YouTube. <laughs> Brandon Tyrell. I mean, just follow me on Twitter at Brandon Tyrell, but also go check out Destin's stuff, baby, because <laughs> he is he is putting in the work when it comes to promotion, and I appreciate that. Thanks, Brandon. That's right. Hey, so it's you got to market it. That's the thing. You got to market yourself, baby. As as for me, I'm on Twitter at DMC underscore Ryan. Check out my final preview of the Xbox Series X. That's the gloves off, full impressions of everything. Uh, all aspects of the console on that's on IGN or on IGN's YouTube channel. So take a look for that. For uh, Destin Legary as well as Brandon Tyrell and our awesome special guest Cam Hawkins. Thank you all very much for watching Unlocked 466, and we'll see you back here next week. <laughs>